I have another lunch I want to share with you. Another low carb or ketogenic meal. Very much like ones I used to make before I was on the ketogenic lifestyle, but it has a twist. If you're interested in hearing more about this meal, keep watching. All right, Mark, what do you mean the same but different? How can it be the same before and after uh, going on the ketogenic lifestyle? Well, basically, a lot of the ingredients in this meal are very similar, if not identical, to what I might have used before going on the ketogenic lifestyle, but I had to make some adaptations. So this is just a simple DIY dehydrated at-home meal. It doesn't look like much in the package. By the way, you can probably see from the writing on this that this meal weighs in at 73 grams. But uh, what it's made with is a, a variety of vegetables, no different than anything I did before. In this case, though, the vegetables are all low-carb vegetables. So I, I've got things like cauliflower rice that I dehydrated. There is some carrot in there. There is some green be beans. There is some red and green peppers in there that are dehydrated. Uh, yeah, so just a number of vegetables that I would use in any meal, but in this case, there are no heavy starchy ones like potatoes, no grains, no wheat products of any type, so very low carb. For protein, I use something I've used often in a lot of my meals, which is gravel. And for those of you who are familiar with, with uh, making meals for the trail, uh, gravel is dehydrated hamburger with all the fat removed. So basically, you either fry it in a fry pan or simmer it in water, drain off all the fat that you can, rinse the fat off, then spread it out on your dehydrator, and it turns into little tiny rock-like things, hence the name gravel. They rehydrate well in meals. The problem is you just got rid of all the fat and now you've got a very lean protein source in your meal. So if that's all I did was use these vegetables, low carb as they are, and the gravel to create this meal, I would have a high protein, low carb meal, but it wouldn't be a keto friendly meal because what's missing? fat. And that's always the hardest thing to get into these meals is some type of a fat source. Now, ideally, I would use something that is shelf-stable, meaning it doesn't require any refrigeration. For the most part, especially now that I'm, I'm just out here for the day and the temperatures are cooling, olive oil will work, uh, ghee will work, coconut oil will work, butter will work, heavy cream will work. There's a lot of things that I could put in this. But if I wanted to make this something that was shelf-stable and lightweight and something I can take away in the summertime or I don't have, I can put it in my pack for just when I need a meal and I wasn't planning on having one, well, I wanted something I can put in there and I found something. It, I've used it in at least one other meal and that is freeze-dried cheese. Now this one is the Wisps brand and it is cheddar and this is available at least in my grocery stores locally. There's two or three different brands of freeze-dried cheese. The other one that I've used is Moon Cheese and this has and will replace all the fat that's missing from this meal. So this bag weighs in at 60 grams. I've already opened it and tasted it because it's, it's actually good as a snack but that's not what I want to use it for. So half of this bag and that's what they give the nutrition nutrition fact, fact, uh, facts for would provide 180 calories. So the whole bag would be about 360 calories. That's not bad, especially when you add it in with what else I've got in there, which is rather low in calories from carbohydrates. Not a lot of uh, protein source from the meat, but there is some in there. So most of the proteins, and of course most of the fat, if not all of the fat, is going to be coming from this cheese. And in uh, the full bag, there would be 30 grams of fat. Not bad, eh? 30 grams of fat. There would also be 22 grams of protein. So adding that in with the hamburg or the ground beef, that really ups the protein level some. And there are one gram of carbohydrates. I don't know where that's coming from because it's neither a fiber nor a sugar. So uh, if it's a milk solid, it's likely a milk sugar and that, uh, that would make some sense. But there is nothing in here when, other than the cheese and that's it. There, there's nothing else. This is just freeze-dried cheese. Now, it comes out like little flakes. So what I did with this bag is I just crushed it down to, not a powder, but, you know, very small granules. 
And uh, that's what we're going to do today. I wanted to, I normally would have put it all in one bag together, but I wanted to show you what this came in. So that's my lunch for today. So that, what I'll need to do now is get a pot of water on. We'll put this in, we'll simmer it up and we'll see what it tastes like. So I just got a little head start and put my zebra billy pot, my 12 centimeter zebra on top of a wood stove that I'm doing a review on today, which will appear separate from this video. And this is the Goshawk wood gas stove, a small titanium wood gas stove. And right now I have one cup of pellets working inside of there and it's doing an amazing job. So watch for that review separately. I will lift the lid off. Now the water is not hot. Actually, it almost is. I only had it on for a few minutes just to kind of preheat it. Now, what I didn't mention in putting this meal together is what else that I use. So I did put in a lot of spices in here. Uh, I also think I put in, I'm trying to remember if I put in some uh, beef broth. Yes, yeah, some beef broth in there as well. But I put in uh, just uh, spices. You know, this is really, it's not following any specific recipe. It's just whatever the mood hits me, whatever I want to put in, that's what I put in. And so each one is almost as individualistic as the next one. But it does take a little bit of time when you're dehydrating. It's not the same as a freeze-dried meal where you add water and uh, you know, and just close it up and zip it up. With dehydrated, it takes a little bit of time for it to rehydrate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold off putting the cheese in until almost the end, because I don't want the cheese preventing the vegetables and the meats from rehydrating. And put that back on. And because there's so much heat coming from those pellets, steady, even, but quite intense heat, uh, I'll have to keep an eye on it and make sure that it doesn't boil too hard and just keep stirring it to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. And then when I feel that they're mostly rehydrated, that's when I'll bring it back and we'll add the cheese, give it a few minutes for the cheese to melt in, and then we'll put it in the bowl and test it out. And we've been simmering maybe 10 minutes or so, long enough for the pellets to go down enough where there's no more flame, but I, I gotta tell you, using this little stove and hardwood pellets, the contents of my pot are still simmering, even after the flame's gone out, and they'll do so for quite a while. Just enough heat to melt in my cheese. So, I wanted to show you what I had done with the wisps, the cheddar, freeze-dried cheddar. I just kind of crushed it up right in the bag. Get it all in there. So this is not quite a full bag, so it's not quite the full 360 calories, but uh, I'll be most of it anyway. Now I expect it'll just take a minute or two for the cheese to kind of melt and get gooey. And when it's ready to eat, I'll bring it back and we'll do a taste test. All right, dinner is served. Let me give you a close up. It'll be hard for you to see or distinguish the individual components of the meal because it's, it's kind of a stew or soup more than it is anything else, but I'll explain as I go along. So you can see, let's see. There's some of the Hamburg or the gravel. All right, I apologize. Just as I was giving you a close-up of the ingredients, the battery in my camera died. Fortunately, I have, I always bring along a couple of spares. And um, besides, this is still hot. You can probably see the steam rising off of it. All right, let's give it a taste test. Mm. Well, I gotta tell you, that, that cheddar became a predominant flavor in this soup. I, I had also forgotten in looking at it what else I had put in here for a spice. I put a lot of curry in this one. Uh, I like curry. What can I say? You put in what you want to put in in yours. The meat is all rehydrated. The vegetables, they're easy to rehydrate in any case. What I was wondering about is the cheese. Mmm. Okay, so the cheese has rehydrated, it has gotten soft, but it did not go gooey, stringy like I thought it might. But pretty much that's the nature of cheddar cheese anyway, 
it's not like mozzarella where you get the strings like you do in a in a pizza or anything like that but it is tasty it is soft it is mixed through and it has added not only flavor but a good amount of fat which is what you're really looking for in this meal Okay, I know I was a little vague on the amount of each of the ingredients in this, and uh, that was done quite intentionally, honestly. What I had done is I had mixed a number of vegetables together that I knew would work well together, but I didn't weigh them out to see. It wasn't until after I had put everything in here, minus the cheese, that I weighed the, the, uh, the ingredients, or weighed that bag of, uh, of ingredients. So... That was one reason. And the other reason is, is I'm still working on individual recipes and perfecting them. I guess what I'm saying is you can put something together like this using the vegetables that you like, the ones that you know that work, and just play with it. Experiment with it a little bit. Understanding the ratios that you're looking for, trying to get fewer carbohydrates but enough to have a good meal enough protein to satisfy your protein uh, needs and as much fat as you can possibly get in there to increase the levels of fat. Ideally, you're looking for 60 to 70, maybe even 80% of the calories coming from fat. In future recipes, and I'll try in the video notes in this one to see if I can't break it down, but in future recipes, I'll be more specific with not only the ingredients, but with the macros. Again, I'm reaching out to you for ideas. Ideas of, of uh, whether or not this is the type of meal you like to see me prepare, with more detail given, obviously. If there's something else you would like to see me cook out here. Uh, people have been asking me about pizza, by the way, and yes, pizza is coming. I have two specific crusts so that uh, seem to look like they'll work out here in the woods. I'll do both of them. Uh, maybe not both at the same time, but I'll do both of them. I have a few other interesting keto or low carb meals, and I still have, I'm still promising to do that video that's dedicated to keto and the woods person and uh, the benefits of not only keto for anybody, but especially for the person who likes to venture into the wilds. There are a few things I might have added to this that could have increased the um, overall healthiness of it. Bone broth, collagen fiber, I may have gotten the fat levels up if I had added some uh, uh, MCT powder. I'm not sure how well it would have worked in this if it would have, well, it would have rehydrated, but would it have gone oily on top of the surface? Um, I'll have to try that at home before I share it with you as, as a recommendation. So there are certainly other things that I could have put in this, but uh, overall, it's not only tasty, it is healthy, and it is filling me up very quickly. So I'm going to finish this off, but I just want to once again invite you to give comments on this meal or any meal you'd like to see me prepare out here in the woods that is low carb or ketogenic in nature. And uh, yeah, I'll try my best. All right, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because you know it will make all the difference. Bye for now.